You and all your pretty little friends Up in the hills where the party never ends Your schemes and your dreams when you're whole and you're broken I'm telling all about it in my words unspoken Welcome to Words Unspoken, the Hills podcast. We are two Southern sisters re-watching the Hills and chatting about it for your entertainment. I am Susan, and I'm a 30-something photographer. I'm Jem, and I am truly, truly, truly outrageous. We are so excited. We have a very special episode for you today. Jem, who did we just talk to? We just got off the phone, Susan, with the one and only Justin Bobby Brescia. We chatted with him about his band. He's on tour. We talked about the hills. And because we love y'all so much, we are about to play the whole interview for you on this special bonus episode. Episode. We hope you enjoy it. We are on the line with Justin Brescia. Welcome to the podcast, Justin. Hi, hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on with us. We're super excited to talk to you today. So you're currently touring with your band, Bobby Rock. Tell us about the band's inception and your musical influences. Well, musical influences are a little tricky because that's just, that's just life kind of coming out. I've been drummers for the last six, seven years, and then I had a kid get sick on tour. He got homesick, and he couldn't hash out the last 20 some dates. So my dad sent me this little hard rock drum kit in the mail, and I was like, you know, I'll just use it for practicing, and then it ended up being part of the act now. It's part of the show, so I just use it. It's just me. <laughs> Do you give it a name? Does your machine have a name? Yeah, I called him. What did I call him? I call him a couple names. When he acts up, I call him bad names. <laughs> <laughs> so you have some, like, super profane, like, R-rated names for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kick him. I kick him a lot. Like, really <laughs> so, how would you describe your sound right now with Bobby Rock? It's like alternative punk rock. There's like a little bit of old essence of the of, you know the punk days in the '60s, '70s, '80s, and then it's kind of all over the board. I like playing fast and slow, and then super lyrical content, and then no lyrical content. So, so I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Um, I listened to a few songs earlier and literally just told Susan. I was like, Oh my God, he loves the '70s. So uh, I, to- I totally heard that. It sounded really great. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We, we enjoyed it. What's your favorite one? Oh, I mean, we only put, dropped four, and there's an album coming out this week, which I actually like a lot of the other songs, too. I like Space. Space is a heavy one. I like Till the Sun Does, because it shows some acoustic, basically just acoustic licks in there. I mean, you get a little taste of everything, I guess. It's like picking your favorite child. We shouldn't have even asked you this question. <laughs> so, yeah. so what's your favorite song to perform live with your un- named drum machine <laughs> there is a new one that i start playing with a little bit of a house beat like a little uh-huh. like not tech techno but it's a little bit more clubby yeah it's starting to be really really fun to play and then there's another new one uh, love me or leave me at the end where i close out the show and it, it kind of has a good feel and people kind of gravitate to that the new one actually <laughs> I'm not a big advocate of drugs, but it just kind of worked that way, and I called it Mary J. Like, it's working out to be Mary J. <laughs> <laughs> these these things just fall into place, don't they? Yeah, when you're on the road and you're playing music, I think everything just kind of does natural course. It's important. So we're going to switch gears just for a hot minute. Yeah, Talk sure. to us about your salon business, because you even opened a location in Nicaragua, right? Yeah, I did. I had Manhattan Beach, uh, California, New York, downtown, in downtown, like Soho, and then uh, Nicaragua. kind of let them go. There's people that worked in there that just absolutely loved and cherished more than I could do, you know, because I was traveling a lot. So I'd kind of hand them off to, like, the, I wouldn't say highest bidder, but, like, the <laughs> person who showed the most interest, love, and in what we were doing. I had them take it over and kind of run with it. So, so is music your real passion? Well, it's just, um, I, I did music before the hills. I did music just about a little bit earlier than cutting hair, too. So it's always been, that was always number one. But the hills came along, and that kind of just fell into place. And then hair is always the gift, actually. And then music just it started with my dad. He just kind of drew a guitar in my room along with baseball bat, baseball glove, mouse clock kind of thing, and just end up picking it up over time. And you know, some days you get dumped by your friends, and you go home and you pick up the guitar, you get into a little bit of a love, and then pick up the guitar, and then kind of just fluctuates from there. And then life happens, and then you pick up the guitar. <laughs> The music's always there. Right. Yeah, it's been the most rewarding out of all the relationships that I've ever That sounds like a really good Justin quote right there. I love it. 
<laughs> so we're a Thanks. podcast about rewatching The Hills 10 years later. Can you tell when MTV is doing reruns and people start coming out of the woodwork with weird questions? Yeah, my socials start skyrocketing again. <laughs> yeah, it's like a reliving a marriage. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm sure that that is not always a pleasant experience for you. What's it like? No, you know what? Now there's no there's no ill intentions. Everybody's out there. I haven't had any guts from any of it, actually, for a very, very long time. I even during the show, everybody's been really cool and really positive. I mean, we don't really accept any negativity in all our socials and stuff like that. We just kind of, like, promote, like, positiveness and whatnot. But, yeah, it's cool. And when, when it reruns, I, I definitely know. And then people will come out. Family, friends are like, hey, it's rerunning. But I feel like TV's dying, so I don't know how much longer that can actually work. I mean, you're, the show you're on could have been one of the last great shows in the history of America. Who knows? Cool. Well, I'll take that. <laughs> What's the funniest thing about being in the hills that we never got to see? There was a shit ton, actually. All my stuff, I felt like, ended up on the cutting room floor. I wanted to keep it lighthearted and fun because it was just so stupid. <laughs> the things that they were dramatizing about were just so minuscule in this life that you just had to turn it into humor. They didn't want that. They wanted tears, attitude, and stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't even get there. <laughs> I tried. But I, like, what if we offer you more money? I'm like, well, that may help, but you ain't going to get trying or anything. <laughs> So how did your life change for better or for worse due to appearing on the show? No, it was good. The whole the whole experience was great. The people I met were great. I mean, I was kind of, it was kind of easy for me because I was already running around doing hair for like one and five, a lot of bands and celebrities and stuff. So it wasn't like super shell shocking for me to be right in kind of all involved in the net, which actually helped because otherwise I probably reacted different. But I was smart about it. I took the money that I got and invested in salons and got a beach house in Manhattan Beach. And wasn't dumb about it, traveled and gave back to family and friends and used it wisely, accepted it the way I think it should be accepted. So you obviously don't regret being on the show? No, not at all, Wonderful. not at all. I mean, there's a couple of moments where I didn't want to be filmed and they kept filming and stuff, which would piss me off. But other than that, I mean, it's part of the business and what they were kind of trying to go for. A 24-year-old little punk, you know. <laughs> But you also seem like the kind of person that can really ride the wave and bloom where you're planted. And I think that you that you probably handled it okay. And it sounds like it, it worked out great for you. It was a blessing, and I don't I don't regret any of it. So we are a couple of Southern sisters, and we were born and raised in the Deep South. We still live here, and we know you're smack dab in the middle of a tour in our part of the world. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on this strange land? I love it. I mean, I've done this a few times, so it's not my first rodeo but it never ceases to be amazing to some of the people that you meet for somebody who hasn't traveled the south and what I mean they could be off put by you know some of the interactions you may come across with some people but at the end of the day the hearts everybody seems to have a more of a genuine heart you'd find in bigger cities for sure want to help each other out no question about it people I like the most for sure so what's the weirdest thing that you've seen down here I haven't done contact with too much weird shit I don't know I don't think I could be phased too much these days but something weird I think I just find it funny if anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of laugh it off, think about it later. Like, was that weird or was I just entertaining something ridiculous? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the funniest thing about the South compared to the rest of the country? Well, in the South, there's there's more unity. Even in New Orleans, I feel like there's less segregation here. There's more acceptability. Everybody's a little bit more accepting. Uh, everybody in the club or everybody out of show and stuff like that seems to unite pretty well without any qualms. And then in some cities, you get a little bit of segregation. You get a little bit of, like, you can tell who are TV people and tell who are punk rockers. You know who the TV crew who is. They want to see, like, from, you know, TV, a TV personality. And then you can see the people who enjoy the music. And then down in the South, it seems to blend in very nicely. You know, there's no, there's no bullshit. Oh, we're happy to hear that. We, we love it yeah. here, too. That's why we're unicorns who have actually stayed here after <laughs> being raised here. It's, it's very uncommon. Have you eaten any good food when you've been down here? I'm about to go into this place called Margarita's off Magnolia by the gig that I played at. And they said it's supposed to be really nice. So, oh. yeah, it's tricky. Sometimes you don't get to stop. I mean, yeah. we have a six, seven-hour drive between shows, so you end up packing up and <clears throat> 
week, and it's news, and then get to the next city. So today I have a day off, so I'm going to enjoy oh, awesome. a, little bit, a little bit of Carolina. So you've yeah. always appeared to be a very grounded, artistic person. Are you spiritual at all? Absolutely, yeah. I, I believe in God heavily. Went to Christian schools when I was a kid. Didn't really turn out too well for me there. I got kind of like my butt beat. <laughs> I didn't, didn't learn too much about Jesus, per se, but I do know. I believe in faith, spirituality, and doing good. And I have a huge relationship with God, and I talk to him in daily, especially while you're traveling. Every year you change and you morph into something else that you were before, and then even more so. And you learn. I mean, this whole life is basically a school. So we're learning, and what I thought last year is completely different than this year, and how I act a little different than last year and the year before. So I, I really start to push on whatever is making you happy and gets you tickling, then, then you should absolutely do without a doubt. I see too many any unhappy people out there just kind of grunting and pissed off. Like, well, why don't you stop that? Start doing what you like, even if it cuts your pay- payment or your pocketbook. Just start doing what you're here to do. God gives everybody their thing. And there's nobody, I don't believe, that doesn't have a special thing or a thing that they enjoy. And I think that they need to harp on that and really hone in on their craft. Once they do, they're going to find the Holy Land. And that's, that's heaven on earth. Words are magnificent. And they do, they, you know, they go out the layers of the universe. So you got to get it practicing what you preach I guess I get caught up in projects like I'll get into like uh, for instance like the tour van like tearing out the tour van and get it and rebuilding it like making it like a home kind of thing like I get into projects that kind of my mind so you're very into DIY and crafting in your own Justin Mm -hmm. way yeah for sure yeah we know that you're about to go eat your delicious margaritas so we're super sad that our (laughs) time with you is up but we will be posting your remaining tour dates on all of our social media and thank you yeah, no, you're welcome. And is there anything else you want to tell us about the band or where to find you guys online? Yeah, well, you can go to bobbyrockusa.com and that'll get you straight to the website that gives a little bio and maybe some merchandise that everybody likes, links to the, uh, the music, and then you can go follow Bobby Rock Music on Instagram. Starting to do, starting to see a lot of numbers go up. It's a good thing. And then YouTube. And Bobby Rock is only spelled one word, so if everybody tries to spell it two words, it's just one word. There's a, there's a capital K in there, too, right? Capital B, capital K. Oh, got it. <laughs> like little devil horn. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, yeah, and then the shows. The shows are even better because it's just me, and uh, I think I'm sound like a full rock band with just me, so I think that's something to be heard. Yeah, yeah. Like, and the, and the yeah. drum machine to be named later. Yeah, I think I call them Tom Drum or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much, please. Justin, for joining the Hills podcast today. We really appreciate your time and wish you well. And good luck on your tour this summer. Bye, Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Jem, if only 2008 Jem and Susan could know that we would be talking to Justin Bobby. If we could go back in time and tell those two Southern sisters what was going to become of them and that they were going to have a whole amazing phone chat with Justin. I don't even know how those girls would have reacted, but this was a really exciting special experience and how great was he he was so great Jim he was so warm and friendly and he was just a delight to talk to just an absolute pleasure and I love how he's so articulate and has this wonderful vocabulary and this awesome outlook on life and I feel like we really saw a new side to him that like he said the show didn't portray I just had the best time talking with him I did too Jim I really enjoyed hearing all of his stories and listening to him talk was fascinating Jim I'm just really excited that we were able to get a chance to talk to him and hear his side of the story and hear all the wonderful things that he's involved in now with his music. And speaking of his music, I just want to reiterate that you can find him on bobbyrockusa.com. You can check out all his tour dates here. And it looks like the tour dates he has coming up starting around July 22nd is he's going to Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Columbus, Ohio, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Indianapolis, Chicago, Tulsa, Kansas City, Nebraska, Colorado Springs, Oregon, like all of you people everywhere in the United States will be able to go see him and then he's going to end up in California, Las Vegas, Utah. There's so many places you can go see him if you're in the U.S. Get out there, see him, go up and talk to him, tell him you know about his tour from listening to Words on Spoken the Hills podcast, tell him that Jem and Susan sent you. His shows from what I've seen on social media are awesome. We're also going to play a song or two of his for you at the end of this episode so stay tuned to listen to that audio. 
Thank you for joining us for this special episode of Words on Spoken the Hills podcast. If you want to get in touch with us to tell us how much you enjoyed this wonderful interview we had with Justin, you can email us at wordsonspokenpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at The Hills Podcast or on Instagram at Words Unspoken Podcast. You can also check out our website to listen to all of our episodes at wordsonspokenpodcast.com. Don't forget to like our Facebook. Facebook page, which is over a thousand likes, by the way. Yay! 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 Milestone. And if you love us and if you love Justin Bobby in this interview, go straight to iTunes and rate us and review us because that helps other fans of the Hills find our show. Thank you so much for listening. Jen, should we just do another bye, y'all? It just doesn't seem the same without Justin Bobby joining in with us, but let's just do another one. I miss him already, but let's do another one. Bye, bye y'all! You and all your pretty little friends Up in the hills where the party never ends Your schemes and your dreams when you're whole and you're broken I'm telling all about it in my words unspoken Hello, hello. Thank you, guys. And on our podcast, we always sign off with a lot of yelling of, Bye, y'all! So if you want to join us in saying goodbye with a big old... Is it like a one, it like a one two, three thing? It's like a one, two, three, and we just like yell, Bye, y'all. So And then, and then hang up, right? And then hang up, yeah. <laughs> All right, don't, so... Like, stay, don't stay on awkwardly. Like, <laughs> okay, so one... Right, I'll do it. Okay. Awesome. One, two, two three... three. And now we're going to play for you Bobby Rock's track, Till the Sun Dies. Thank